Hey guys, I'm Fat Buddy Cat, and this is the Ultimate Torque Bug 3.0. All right, we're just gonna pick up right where we left off last time. I have all my hardware and the goodies we should need to get this new jack shaft installed on this doodle bug. The first step, believe it or not, is going to be to remove the back wheel assembly. My friend Zach from Zach's Pro Mod, he deals with these all the time. And he told me if you have the old doodle bug rim, that the offset is actually different. And that is completely correct. If you stand back and you look at the end of the hub where that sprocket adapter is in comparison to the edge of the tire and then you peek over at the other side and you can see where the hub is attached to the rotor. I'd say there's about a half inch difference where the sprocket is sticking out further from the tire. We want our rotor to be sticking out as far as possible. So, I'm going to be swapping those around. I have these switched around and I took the extra minute to pop the seal off these bearings and re-grease them. Now, our brake rotor is substantially further from the tire. That will put it closer to the frame. We'll get to that later. With the sprocket adapter and this Azusa sprocket, we're nice and close to the tire, but we have plenty of clearance for the chain. Now, I just have to put it back on the mini bike. I have the wheel assembly back on the mini. Uh oh. Did I put it on backwards? Wasn't the rotor on that side before? I mean, the spacers are right. It looks like it's in the center. Oh, yeah. That's right. We're switching that, too. The chain, it's going to be on the right side now. Since I have the hardware to assemble this thing with the engine in place, I'm going to use a spare 196 block that I have kicking around. I'm going to bolt all of this on just like I was going to mount it on the mini bike for good. That way everything is in proper alignment to where it's going to be when we get to that point. These bolts are going in very, very easily. The alignment was like nothing because we did the mini slot on the plate on the middle. I can see that this overhang is going to give me some guff when I do my oil changes. 
Hmm. I could trim this back, but it is nice and straight. Uh, I could grind it back. I could just kind of cut a little notch right where the plug is. Hmm. I think I'm actually going to see if I can get a short extension for this. Now that I know the block itself isn't going to move and everything is nice and straight, I'm going to mount it on the mini bike. I have four bolts and hardware set aside. Let's get it done. I now have all of my hardware installed. It's not tightened down so that we can make our adjustments to wherever we're going to need to be for however many links we're going to end up with. Speaking of links, we're going to need a chain. To connect this sprocket to a chain, we need a jack shaft. I get my spacer, my bearings in there, and I have plenty of shaft over here on the bench. Beautiful. I'd say we have plenty on both sides. Next, I'm going to need a sprocket, some spacers, and a length of chain. I have a standard 10 tooth off a 30 series torque converter and a little key cut for it. Over here, I have a bunch of various 5 8 spacers and hardware. So Let's see what works. I'm just eyeballing about where I think that front sprocket is going to go. Now I'll figure out what that space is in between and fill it in with something. Probably a collar and a washer, a couple bushings. On second thought, we might just get it with one of these collars. So That'll be all right up against the bearing. I'll put my key in. And then I'll put some kind of a spacer and the collar on the outside of this. Then I'll grab a chain. I think I have some good stuff for this. I just happen to have the length of that pre-stretched high performance chain kicking around and I'm right in the middle of my adjustment slots you can see right there that means at this length we can loosen it or 
add tension. We're clearing everything. A okay. We still have a little bit of pitch action that we can do on the riser plate out back. I'd say we just about got it. Next, we're going to put a pulley on. I guess it'd be better off to have a regular motor up here after all. That way, I we can line up the output shaft. <sighs> I'll get that done real quick. Fast forward about 10 minutes. I have the engine completely changed out. Now we have an output shaft and our jack shaft where the pulley's gonna go. To figure out where a 30 series pulley's gonna go, we're gonna have to figure out where our driver's gonna go. We're gonna be using the Torquezilla. I don't think there's any question why. This is one of the best things about this setup. We're going to take that Torquezilla, slap it right on there. We're going to stay as close as we can. I know that the backing plate on Torquezilla here sticks out a little further than the pulley so we're gonna need some sort of shims or washers or something right there sweet deal it's looking like two shims there's one there's two and a washer it's gonna get us right where we need to be now, we're going to see if we got a belt that fits on here. Thanks to my friends at OMB Warehouse, we keep a few around. Awesome. I ended up using a standard 30 series belt. The one that comes with all the aftermarket units. So that makes replacement super simple. I'm waiting for those split collars still. So I'm just going to leave my ends hanging out. I don't have the keys in the driver or the pulley but we're moving look at that we're not even pushed in all the way oh yeah that's going to be smooth i hope One thing that might not go that smooth is the installation of this new hydraulic brake. We'll figure it out. Because as always, it's a work in progress. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.